Welcome to World, the second beautiful day at World Maker Fair. Hope everybody's get ready to have a good time. This is getting started with Arduino. My name is Andrew Terranova with Make. Uh, let me just ask by a show of hands, who would consider themselves an expert on Arduino? Good, because you'd be totally bored. Uh, who, said, who would consider themselves a, basically a complete beginner at Arduino? OK, you are in the right place. Who would say that they're sort of a little bit dangerous intermediate Arduino? OK, good. So what can you do with an Arduino? What is it? Uh, OK, so an Arduino is just a, a little computer on a board. It's a little microcontroller or microprocessor. And it has inputs and it has outputs. So what can you do with it? Almost anything you want, right? So you can prototype a cool circuit. Uh, you can uh, take some uh, cool old toy and hack it and make it do something that it was never intended to do. And uh, I think most importantly, you can learn with it. Because if you're trying to learn programming, many of you may already be experienced programmers, but it's also a, a cool way to learn programming because it's a lot of fun to like, have a project that you build and then have a programming aspect to it. So um, let's just talk a little bit about what, some examples. This is the Monkey Couch Guardian. And uh, I'm going to talk about inputs, processing, and programming, and outputs quite a bit. So, the Monkey Couch Guardian has a, a processor that it'll, a, a sensor to know when somebody's in front of it, right? So that's the input. And then it has a program running looking for something from that sensor. When it sees it, it knows to do something with the output. The output will run the motors to make it clap in a kind of creepy, scary fashion, right? So there's input, programming, output. Same thing here, secret uh, knock gumball machine, right? Instead of putting in a coin, you have a secret knock. It knows to listen to that pattern of knocks. That's its input, the sensor. Then it's, it's waiting for that. It processes it. It says, OK, you got the right knock. I'm going to fire off a little control to uh, run a solenoid, a little electronic, electric solenoid. And then it opens and spits out a gumball for you. Right? Input, program, output. OK? Uh, another example. OK, you can have a sun logger. Right? So it could be sitting out there with a little photo sensor and telling you if it's dark or light outside, right? And logging the data. Okay. Now, interesting thing about I'm going to talk about a little bit more about inputs. Um, there are different kinds of inputs on, a, on an Arduino. There's digital input and output. There's also analog input. Okay. So the difference on inputs, uh, a digital is like on or off, one or zero, right? Uh, analog is like a range of values. So for example, with the sun logger, if you just want to know, is it dark or is it light, that's digital. If you want to know how bright it is, that's analog. OK? Now, there's not, there's not really an analog output, but there's sort of a cheat for that. It's called pulse width modulation. So let's say you want to turn an LED on. That's digital. You just turn it on, it's on. If you want to turn it on to a certain level of brightness, since you can't do like less voltage, what you do is you can pulse it. So instead of being on all the time, for a given period of time, it's on in pulses. So if it's on 50% or half the time, then your LED is at like half brightness. Less, less percent time, then it's less bright, more percent, it's more bright, right? So that's called pulse width modulation, or PWM. And I'll, you'll see a little bit more about, about that in a minute. OK, where can you learn about Arduino? I would say the, the best place to start is just go to Arduino's website, arduino.cc. They've got resources to learn there. There's also many online tutorials uh, that you can find that are really, really helpful. I go back to Arduino's webpage all the time when I need to look up how a command works. Um, also, there are some good books and resources. Actually, at the uh, Maker Shed, you can pick up Getting Started with Arduino. There's also a kit. That comes, uh, that's a good place to start. And if you like robots, I love robots. If you like robots, you can uh, get uh, uh, Make an Arduino Controlled Robot, which is a pretty cool book. All right. Let me introduce you to the basic Arduino family. Okay, there are actually a lot of Arduino boards, but here are some of the four basic ones. The Uno is a great place to start. If you just want to learn Arduino for the first time, the Uno is a great board. I'm going to talk a bit about those inputs and outputs, because some of the ways why you might choose one or the other are the inputs and outputs. The Uno has 14 digital input-output pins. Uh, six of those pins can be used for that pulse-width modulation where you can make the LED or whatever 
not full on, right? Um, it also has six analog inputs. Okay, that's opposed to, let's say you had a specific project in mind and you're like, well, I need a lot more pins. I got to sense a lot more things or I have to control a lot more things. The Mega is kind of like the Uno, but it's got 54 digital input-output pins, 15 of which can be pulsed with modulation. So it's a really good choice, and 16 analog input. So if you have a lot of I.O. input-output, then that's a good choice. The Leonardo has a different processor. Um, it's got some built-in USB capability, which is, is new. Um, it doesn't work with all the shields. I'll explain shields in a second. Um, but it doesn't work with all the shields that the Uno will work with that are sort of standard. Uh, if you're using something called SPI, I'm not going to go into it, it might not work. So just be aware of that if you choose the Leonardo. But it has 20 digital I.O., uh, uh, seven, seven of which are PWM, 12 of which are analog. Uh, the Due is a different processor. It's a faster processor, 84 megahertz versus 16 for the others. Uh, 54 digital I.O., 12 PDO, PWM, 16 analog input. So similar in I.O. size to the Mega. The important thing about this is the other three boards work at 5 volts. The Due works at 3.3 volts. There are some sensors out there that operate at 3.3 volts. If you are running a processor that uses 3.3 volt input and you plug 5 volts into its input, you will probably blow up the pin and maybe the whole board. So that's something to be aware of when you're trying to pick a board. Maybe you have a sensor in mind and you'll see that it runs at 3.3 volts. The Due might be a really good choice for you. Otherwise, maybe the others are a good choice. Okay. Shields, I've got to tell you about shields. When you hear the word shield in the world of Arduino, it just means expansion board that snaps right on top. It's got the form factor to snap right on on top and plug right in. And it passes like power and common pins right through. Um, that's all shield is, OK? OK, there are some new family members to Arduino. Uh, there is the, an Arduino Robots. Again, I love robots. Uh, so it's, a, it's got the processor, motor drivers, motor wheels, everything right in the kit. And it's basically two boards of Arduino. I think there's actually a, a one to run the sensors and one to run motors and things. So actually, two Arduinos on there. Uh, another cool new product that was just announced in May at Maker Faire Bay Area and is available for sale for the first time in the US here at the Maker Shed is the Yoon. This adds Wi-Fi capability, and most interesting, also interestingly, it's got another chip running like Linux Unix on it, and there's like a, a special little bridge library in between that. I'm not going to go into depth about it, but um, if you're interested in Wi-Fi and, and Linux and bridging those worlds, that's a good board to look at. Okay, there are just a couple of other boards you might hear about. Uh, briefly, it's the Esplora, the Arduino, Ethernet, the Lilypad, the Micro, the Nano, the Mini, the Pro, the Pro Mini, and the Fio. Everybody got that? No, of course you don't. Okay, the only re the reason you might choose one of these boards is because it fits your project or what you want to do. The Esplora is like the Leonardo, but it's got built-in sensors. Like maybe you want to make a little game controller. It's got like pads built in. Um, the Ethernet, if you have a project where you want built-in Ethernet and you know you want that, you might go for the Arduino Ethernet, although you can get a shield for the Uno that's got Ethernet. Uh, the lily pad is that little round form factor. It's really cool. It's only about this big. Great for wearables. You want to make a, a, con a, a controlled blinky badge or build something into an article of clothing or a stuffed animal, it's great. It's got holes you can sew right in. It's really cool. Um, and there are various versions of that. Uh, the micro, the nano, the, they work on different voltages. They're very small. They're minimalistic. They're good for embedding. I'm not going to go into the details. The only other one I'll mention something about is the FIO has a wireless protocol called XB built into it. So if you want to work with wireless communications, the FIO is, uh, is a good choice. OK? Um, that's it. OK, here's what the basic Arduino is. I'm going to just show you around the board. The, uh, there's a reset button along the top. You'll, there's a header of pins. That's called, those are the digital I.O. pins we've been talking about. On the, in the middle there, that long chip, that's the brain. That's the processor. Along the bottom are the power and analog input pins. And, uh, and then on the side there is uh, USB power as well as programming jack. And also, like, if you want to, a lot of times when you're programming it, you power it right off your computer. And then you uh, can plug it into a wall or run it off batteries off the jack. OK, what do you need? Uh, we talked about shields. Lots and lots of different shields. If you have a project in mind, Google like Arduino shield, whatever, and you might find somebody who's already done it. Or you can get one with a breadboard or just a prototyping space to build your own circuit. That's a shield. 
Uh, what you need is your computer, a cable, your Arduino, and the software, which is downloadable free from arduino.cc. It runs on multiple platforms. You install the software, and then uh, you start your Arduino. You can run a program. You can load all sorts of example programs. Um, there's a program called Blink that comes with it. It blinks the little onboard LED. Um, it's like the hello world of, of the Arduino. If you know programming, that's like the first thing you're supposed to learn is hello world. Um, it's kind of like that. You just down, you, you push the example out and your Arduino resets and starts blinking. And then, if you're new to programming, change the rate it blinks at. Use PWM and make it like fade and dim, right? You can do different things. You, or attach a sensor and make it react, right? This is how you can get started. Lots of example sketches and lots of examples on the internet of different things you can do. That is my entire talk. Uh, are, do we have time for any questions? Yeah, we have time for a couple questions. Anybody has a question? No? You sure? So they'll run off, um, they'll, they'll run off a, a, like a range of voltage. I think it's up to like 9 or 15 volts even. Yeah, it's low power. But if you're running things off your project, like motors, off a, off a, like a motor driver shield, then you're going to want, yeah, it, the board is 5 volts. And there's, most of them have a, um, some of the boards have a built-in um, voltage controller. If you get a board that doesn't have that, then you have to feed it the right voltage. So it varies by the board. Anything else in the back? Uh, not really. I think you can, add, you can add like a data logger, so you can like sort of add memory that way, but you're not really expanding the memory of the processing itself. You like, it's more like data storage. Or like an SD card, there's SD card snap-ins. Anything else? In the red shirt? How do you... Power to the... Oh, the Nano. Uh, there's pins right on it. You just kind of plug it in. I actually have never worked with the Nano, so I'm not sure. Much, uh, I'm not sure. Actually, Arduino's webpage. One second. If you go to Arduino CC and you, you click on products, there's a detailed description of each one, including the power inputs required. So that's a great resource for you to use. Yes, sir. Oh, the programming language is C-like. Okay, so if you're familiar with programming in C, it'll be very familiar. If you're not, it's not that hard. And they've made an effort to sort of like hide some of the deep, ugly guts of C in libraries that you don't have to look at, but you can look at, right? So if you want to run a servo, you can. There's a library for that. If you want to learn how it works or write your own library or modify a library, you can do that too, okay? Hold on, just one out. Do we have any more time or we're done? We're, we're done, I'm sorry. So, uh, look us up, or there, like I said, there's a lot of online reproof. Thank you all very much. Enjoy Maker Fair.